Welcome to the internet guys, Crazy Lemon of Fear and welcome back to Aviary Attorney for the 18th part. Um, last episode we defended Severin Kokoriko and it was pretty cool because we we saved him. Yes. And now we are going to continue and see what's, uh, what happened. So let's go! Oh man, oh man! You kicked so much derriere at the impromptu trial yesterday. The Swibbles were all like, we're executing, <laughs> we're executing this punk mob justice, ra ra ra. But you were all like, this isn't how we do things in France, chicken pluckers. And then they were all like, Sparson, let's get serious for a moment. Serious? You just part of the craziest lawyering move in the history of French law. We should be celebrating. We don't have time to pull out of the champagne. Didn't you see the anger in the rebel eyes? Didn't you feel the tension in the air? We're just days away from violence breaking out in onto the streets. Hmm? Oh yeah. I guess another revolution may be around the corner. But what exactly we can can we do? We already told the police everything we know. Unless you're not thinking of arming yourself to the teeth and fighting the rebel force yourself, are you? What? No. You watch far too many auction operas. I was thinking of preparing a legal case. A case? For whom? At their core, all historical of revolution sentence on trial. A nation's, nation's ruler are tried and held accountable for the crimes. But you saw the horrendous trial that took place last night. Nobody cares about due process when emotions are running high. Regardless of the outcome of the revolution, we need to make sure that everybody has an equal opportunity to, for justice. That makes sense. So what's the plan? We head to Canal Tavern and hand out some business cards? Think bigger. Who will the rebels target? The... King? Exactly. To the Palais Royal! Act 4B. Egalité. Equality. Falcon and Sparrowson rushed to the Palais Royal to arrange a private audience with the king. After filling in a pile of forms, the two are led in a waiting area. Oh, PewDiePie! Hello again! You're so small! <laughs> are you ready to see the king? That's right. Okay, take a number and wait to be called. Take a number. Yep, just wait your turn. Oh, can you do that to me? Oh, <laughs> who is that? Gizzo. More fools who have come to see the king, let me guess. Lawyers. That's right, who did you? Hey, I know you! You're the Prime Minister, Mr. Gizzo. Oh, wow, you're right, Sparson. It's an honor to meet you, Prime Minister. Spells formalities. You two are here to offer the king legal aid, aren't you? Yep, we're going to offer him assistance for the upcoming re rebellion. Let me give you a word of advice. Don't bother. Excuse me? The king doesn't take kindly to any form of criticism. He buries his head so far in the sand that no one could, that one could swear he's an ostrich. One would think that seven assassination attempts would be enough for a man to learn that he is detested. With all due respect, Prime Minister, I think the King of France is mature enough no to not let his ego get in the way of senses. So one will think. 24! That's us! It was a pleasure meeting you, monsieur. Good luck, you'll need it. We'll need it. 24! Calling number 24! Good day, your majesty. Good day, monsieur. <laughs> What's that? I am the King of France! And I am rocking my chair! Louis Philippe. Good day, monsieur. <laughs> Can I help you with something? No, oh, I probably should have prepared a speech beforehand. That would have been smarter. Just wing it. Right, let's see. How to start? Oh, great and pious ruler. Your Majesty. Listen up! Your Majesty. Your Majesty, what am I about to say is of, utmo is of the utmost importance. Please listen closely. Okay, I'm listening. A great evil has besieged your kingdom. Merde's about to go down. Shit about to go down. There are a storm of the wind. A great evil has besieged your kingdom. 
As we speak, revolting revolutionaries are plotting to remove you from power. Goodness, whatever shall I do? We humbly offer our aid. We can help, for our price. You need our help. We are sure that such a pitiful revolt will blow over in no time at all. Nonetheless, we would like to humbly offer our aid as lawyers. We may be of great use to the throne in this troublesome time. Hmm, I think I understand. You do? I understand that you are a pair of con artists attempting to screw a self-made bourgeois out of, the, out of his hard-earned cash. You have some nerve to even imply that my people hate me. I am the citizen king. I am beloved by all. Beloved kings tend to experience fewer and assassination attempts. Back, have these two crooks thrown in jail. What? <laughs> Maybe that will teach them a thing or two about respect. Right well, away, your majesty. You can't be serious. Oh, he was. <laughs> oh, he was serious. <laughs> Well, this is another fine mess you've gotten me into. There's no need for the attitudes, person. We won't be in here for long. Once we receive a court hearing, the judges will no doubt dismiss our charge instantly. And how long will it take for us to get a court hearing? Tell me that, Monsieur Smarty Pants. Uh, a week or so, I'm guessing. Hmm, I can see why that might be a problem. The revolution could be in full swing by then. What to do, what to do? We could try escaping. Don't be ridiculous. Nobody has ever escaped from the conciergerie before. Ah, but nobody has ever locked the genius person and his witty like a falcon into the same jail before. It's an absurd suggestion. Got any better ideas? Okay, let's break out of prison. Okay, let's do that I guess. Fantastic. Select an area to examine. Look, Falcon, a loose brick. We could wait for our guard to transfer us to some place, sneak up behind him, and then, and then, and then we get a death sentence for murder? I think not. Let's search a little harder. There's a little dent here. One of us could hide. Hide? What will that accomplish? Well, a guard could eventually come in and be like, Where's the other prisoner? And then we use a momentary confusion to push him over and escape. Do you really think an experienced guard would be confused by a prisoner hiding in a little hole in the wall? We can do better. Mm. There's a bit of scrap metal in this hole. I think it broke off an iron shackle. We could dig through the stone walls with this. See, it's so scratch scratchy. That might actually work, if we had a decade or two. The that's a maybe on the stone digging scheme? Well, I'll keep it in mind in case the king decides to go all count of Monte Cristo on us. <laughs> a fireplace. It's been bricked up, so escaping up the chimney is an option. Okay, so just that now. A ledge! Give me a leg up and I can go up and, and shimmy my way over somewhere. <laughs> Let's be honest, person. Never of us have the physical prowess to shimmy anywhere. Okay, well, I guess we can't escape. There's nothing else. I give up. So soon? Yes, trying to escape from a notoriously inescapable prison wasn't the smartest plan we have ever devised. Well, well, well. That voice. That condescending tone. Severin! <laughs> Just what are you two bird brains doing? Severin, are you alright? Yes, yes, I'm fine. The injuries I sustained were mostly superficial. The doctor advised me not to do anything strenuous anytime soon, but he gave the old clear for returning to my job. So tell me, why did I get a memo informing me that JJ Falcon and Sparrowson were being held in the court surgery for treason? It's all Falcon's fault! Naturally. <laughs> I figured that if our revolution is inevitable, then we should do our best to ensure that the uprising proceeds in an organized manner. The less bloodshed, the better. Okay, so what did you do? We offered the king our assistance. <coughs> we offered the king our assistance. We said that we will defend him in court if and when such a need arises. Well, we didn't quite use those words. Tch, this is the first time the king has had someone in prison for something so pointless. What a pig headed fool. Consider your charge dropped. Alright, let's get out of here. Hold on, you've got my interest with the idea of yours. A bloodless revolution? 
You're absolutely right in that. If the king is captured, is captured, the citizen will devolve into an unruly mob of animals. We should prepare for our formal trial. No, we should preempt it. We, you're going to help us? Of course. This is not a task that c can be handled by two birds alone. What do you mean by preempt, Severin? We go on the offensive. We charge the king with crimes against the French people before the rebels ev can even act. We can do that. We can certainly try. I start building a case against the king. My argument will be focused on the king's glutinous and irre irreverent fiscal policies. His lack of con commitment to his socio-political premises, his overall ineptitude and irresponsibility on all facets of his duties as a monarchical, monarchical ruler, and obviously his denial of universal suffrage. <laughs> Obviously. Why am I supposed to defend the king from all that? You can't. If you try to argue with logic and facts, this hypothetical trial will inevitably result in an unslight guilty verdict. So I suggest that you take a different approach. Appeal to the king characters. Try to win people out with tales of the beloved citizen king. He hasn't been called the citizen king for like 10 years. It was just such ah. It was just a suggestion. But consider this, you don't need to win the case, you just need to make a strong enough argument that the trial is fair. All that remains is ensuring that the king can be peacefully brought to the courthouse when the protests start to turn violent. That's a job for the police and royal guard. I'll inform the inspector volatility of our plan so that he can prepare accordingly. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. An interesting idea at least. At least, I will if I could find him. Inspector Volatil is missing? Apparently, he's taken an informal leave of absence since Wednesday. Hold on, Falcon. One thing eludes me. As you probably figured, Inspector Volatil had performed an investigation into your past. He thought you were the Viridian killer, crazy as it sounds. And well, I'm sorry for doing that. It was, it was quite invasive of me, but I can't help but wonder. Why did you change your name around 1830? Because... I was ashamed, I suppose. I had a family name to live up to. My grandfather was something of a successful lawyer. Lawyer. So when I turned up to my classes at law school, people would gap at me. They would say, "Wow, you have big shoes to fill," and your grandfather would be proud. But I was a terrible law student, mediocre at best. I knew that deep down, I would never be out the mind my grandfather was. Fascinating. I had no idea. Who was your grandfather? If you don't mind me asking, Falcon. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it was just another overly opin opinionated rebel who died in the old revolution. I see. Well, let's not dilly dally in any longer. We have duties to carry out. Right. We're going to find anecdotes, and we're going to defend the king, whether he likes it or not. <laughs> okay. A new day. What do we need to do then? Um. Let's go to our animal associate, I guess. Yes, let's see them. Visitor, Monsieur Vipes, visitor. Ah, if it isn't Monsieur Falcon and Monsieur Sparson, how may I help you two today? We're doing very well, Monsieur, but we don't have much time, so let me cut to the chase. We're collecting positive anecdotes about the king. Would you happen to have any? Positive anecdotes, hmm? Oh, curious. As it happens, I have met the king twice. Once, as you know, I was in my Juan Carrido persona. Oh, right, of course. I don't think that story will be any use to us. What was the other incident? I can tell you, but there is a price. Again. Are you serious? You're such a money grabber. I fucked us to it, monsieur. Fine, fine. How much do you want? Forty francs on good? Ten. Ten thousand? Seriously? No! <laughs> That's a bit much. I uh, I don't have that kind of money, monsieur. Ah, no matter. I'm sure you'll think of some way of repaying the debt. Between that and my medical bills, <laughs> we should be really, be ready to afford basic things like food for the year. Four thousand. Hmm. Let's not worry about the debt for now, monsieur. Let me just tell you the story. It was several years ago. 1841, I believe, I was lingering about the Ile de la Cité. 
I was in the pursuit of an investigative lead, so I had ad adopted the persona and outfit of a sickly beggar. That's when I was approached by a kind-faced man. It was the king himself. He took a 20 francs coin uh, out of his pocket. The king gave money to a sick beggar, or at least someone who looked like a sick beggar? That's great, we can use that. I'm not done, monsieur. The king took the coin out and said, I know what it's like to be poor. When I was your age, I only had one thousand of these to my name. Then he pocketed the coin and left. Oh. <laughs> Seriously. I'll make a note. Gave financial advice to the poor and needy. <laughs> well, our story has been added to the evidence folder. I hope the anecdote was of some use to you, monsieur. It might be, but I don't feel that we got 10,000 francs worth of material. I see. No matter. Just keep him in mind if you ever see a potential client. We will. Have a pleasant day, monsieur. Okay, then. Uh, let's go to the canal view. Look at the view. Ah, just the dodo I wanted to see. Madame Canel, quick question. Have you ever served the King of France? Ha 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 ha! Good one, huh? That's hilarious. Hey, me serving the King? Me? Would you like some wine, Your Majesty? <laughs> I can't wait to save the king of Denmark! <laughs> I think that was a no. <laughs> and I think you may be right. Let's go to the card room. But not play card, okay? Ah, oh, the big fellow as we told. You to play some card, monsieur? Not today. I'm afraid I don't have time for that, monsieur. I have some investigative work to take care of. Come on, surely you have time for one quick game. No, thank you. Maybe later. I understand. See you on, monsieur. Oh, you have nothing to tell me? Come on. The working room. Inspector Valetti? Uh, hello, Inspector. <laughs> what? <laughs> he has uh, a hiccup. Falcon! J! J! Falco! <laughs> yes. I think. I think I made a mistake. I say, do I see two empty bottles of wish and vodka? It's a mystery, or oh, you're still standing. No, listen. It's... Yes, this is important. <laughs> Inspector, maybe you sh should have this conversation when you're a little more sober. No! No, Falcon. Listen. Falcon? I fucked. Falcon? <laughs> I fucked you as a what is in here. What? A very dear killer! The, the man who had me in the... In the general inhibition. You thought I was a very dear killer? What did you even come to that conclusion? I saw that. I changed your name around 8, 1840 and... I... And you made an exception. Wait, is that why you gave Sarah a tip off? Were you trying to lure the animal out of me or something? I'm sure if I can't... It was a mistake. <laughs> Do you forgive me? Of course. Yeah, sure. I forgive you for assuming that I am mass murderer and then for nearly killing me and several in order to prove it. <laughs> oh, no, no, thank you, Falcon. <laughs> no, listen closely, Inspector. I have a favor to ask of you. A favor? For you, JJ, anything. Maybe we should wait until this inspector is a little more coherent. No! I don't want to do that. I must. I must pay my debt. Excellent. So, Severin and I are planning a case, a very big case, against the King of France. We intend on trying him before the rebels can get their hands on him. When the rebellion starts, we would like you to bring the King to the Corlos. Do you think you can do that? <laughs> Inspector? <laughs> Treason! We are the advisor to the rebel cause! This isn't treason, Inspector. We're ensuring the safest outcome to an inevitable revolution. You are tree! You are tree soon! Tree soon! You are scum! <laughs> Told you. Incoherent. 
Yeah, I guess you're a wise person. Well, Inspector, maybe you should contact us uh, if you change your mind. And once you've sobered up... <laughs> it's so funny. Don't bother, Falcon. Let's wait for the old bird to sober up. Sober up. Inspector, won't for his investigate. Are we ready to eat the world? Yep, let's go. Yep, let's make a move. <laughs> that was so funny. I loved it. Okay, let's go to Leal. Time for some shopping, Falcon? Maybe later. For now, we need to find people who've spoken to the king. He's been known to pass through Leal on occasion, so if we are lucky. Sutan! Hey, monsieur, it's us, remember? We remember. Are you keeping well, madame? Absolutely. Never been better. So what can I tell you today? Information. We're looking for positive stories about the king. I don't suppose that you have any. The king? No, I haven't got anything. Nothing to say about the king. The king's a... A... Smelly active! Quiet, child. You know what they say about the king of its spies everywhere. <laughs> spies? Calm down, Sparson. The rumors of the king having an elaborate spa spy network are patently untrue. Then how do you expect the shutdown banquet, sir? The government clamping, clamping down... <coughs> oh, sorry. The government clamping down on anyone who dissents, you know? Let's get this conversation back on track. Joey, can you tell us why the king is smelly active? My name's not Joey. It's nothing <laughs> you need to concern yourself with, monsieur. Please go on. Please go on, madame. Don't worry, we aren't spies. At least I don't think we are. I know, it's trust you guys. See, a couple of years ago, we were running a shop, and I think an old, old and end shop. And, and, we had an egg. It was this golden egg, super precious. We must have booked that thing for 200 francs, but it was, it was easily worth 10 times that. We were planning on making a nice tidy sum from it. I see, an investment egg, so what happened? Well, one day we were visited by the king, no less, and old King Lou Phil showing an interest in our, key, in our egg. So we were thinking this would be our chance to make bank, right? But then the geezer just goes and waddles us with it. Without paying you? Oh yeah, he paid us all right. What's this? The coin one of the king got flipped away. It isn't even French. I think this is British. One of this crazy imperial unit coins from a crazy imperial country. <laughs> I have no idea what the British French ex exchange right is. And can we buy this off for this of you, madame? Put your wallet away and keep it. It's so wor worthless to me. Sutton's coin has been added. Losing that egg bankrupted us. It put us out on the streets. But now we've bounced back. Sutton and Gomad, better than ever. That's six and to hear. Anyway, we must take our leave. You've been a huge help, madame. We're going to go kick that ging king's butt and get your back. Hold on, we're supposed to be the defense. <laughs> God damn it, what did the king do? Ah. Okay guys. Uh, we're gonna cut the video here. And maybe finish it on the next uh, episode. So yeah, as always, don't forget the 5N. Like, share, favorite, subscribe and comment if you want to. And remember that you have the power to help me by sharing this video around. So thank you for watching. And I will see you soon in another episode. Love you all guys. Woo!